Peace TV English, the solution for humanity. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to another episode. And the episode is in the series Dawa Ilallah, how to be effective in Dawa. And we are speaking, or well, we're going through a book written on Dawa Ilallah and we've been looking at different points that the author has raised in this series that he's done. And we are now looking at the character that we are calling people to. And at the same time as calling those people to this character, we must have these characteristics ourselves. So it's the characteristics of a da'i and the characteristics that we are wanting to give other people when calling. So we can do both at the same time. When we are calling to people, we are thinking, have I got these aspects in my life? Now last time we were together, we were speaking about the cover of the Bhagavad Gita and how the cover of the Bhagavad Gita has, in most countries, it has a picture of a man pulling in five different horses, and each horse is supposed to represent different senses. And we said that in Islam, it is fine to have senses and to allow our senses to have enjoyment, but as long as we are controlling those senses, don't let them go wild. We don't want to be like monks that don't allow our senses ever to be gratified in any way, but we don't want to over gratify. So we have to be very, very cautious on what we do with our senses because there is a lot of mischief going on. There's a lot of whispering that goes on. And we allow ourselves to give in to lusts of the flesh. We give in to lusts of desire for possessions. Lust is not only to do with sex or sexuality. It also has to do with lustful power, lustful possessions. So the word lust has a very big term. It's not just confined to one thing only. So there's many things that we need to take control of. So we're looking at when we as Dais are going out there, we need to have control over these issues in our lives. We have to be masters of this in our lives. And when we are calling people to Islam, these are the qualities that we want them to have as well, inshallah. That we want them to have control over their senses, specifically their senses of chastity, how to keep themselves chaste, not to be people who give in to their desires. And so, when we are speaking to people, we will try to urge people not to do things that are illegal, not to engage in things that are against the teachings of Allah. So we want them to do things that are righteous, that are not against what the Prophet Muhammad told us to teach people. So we want to make sure that when we start talking to people, that we don't give them too many no's, but that we give them more yeses, but if we see people involved in activities or things that we know are haram, we need to gently guard them. But we cannot force them to come over. We can't force them to change. We've got to do it in a gentle way. So we want to help them get control of their senses. There are many, many ideas and ways that we can help. And the more the person that you are talking to trusts you, the more you'll be able to help them. But you need to help yourself first if you're going to be going out there and doing this. So this applies to you before the person you're calling. You need to have victory in this part of your life. In other words, you have to have accomplished the solution to this area in your life already. So you shouldn't be one having issues with this. If you're having issues with this, you have to be even more cautious. In the Christian faith, when the Christians go out and do, do their propagating, of their religion. They normally go out two by two. You'll see them going in two by twos, maybe sometimes even three. And they do this for a reason, to protect themselves from maybe putting themselves in situations where lust can come in. 
There was a woman from the UK who came to me online and she wanted to do ask me questions online. Christian woman. And so the first sentence when she asked me about Islam, I answered her and then I said, refer to the sister in America who will be able to help you further. And she said, I don't want to speak to a sister in America. She read my story. She wants me to help her. And I said, I'd love to help you, but I'm really busy. But can I give you the sister? So you see, the whole time you're referring them back to the sister. You do not continue. No matter what they say to you, no matter how they flatter you, no matter what nice things they say about you, you keep referring them to somebody else. You understand? Do not be caught in the trap. Shaitan is the master of deception. He will do anything that he can possibly. He'll get you a supermodel to come and ask you questions about Islam. He'll do anything, whatever it takes to crush you, whatever it takes to stop you from being effective in your dawah. He will do it. Beware of men. Beware of women. Women, be careful of men. Men are up to no good. Men, be careful of women. They're up to no good. Shaitan will use them against you. So refer, 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 refer. The only option available. No matter how much they tell you what a great person you are, how you make the most sense, everyone else I've spoken to never made as much sense as you did. You've explained Islam in a way that no one else has ever explained it. That's what they'll do. That's not her speaking. It's not him speaking. It's shaitan saying, tell him this now. Tell him that now. Tell how clever she is. This is what shaitan does. Do not fall for the trap. Be very, very cautious. So make sure you run a mile. Don't stick around for trouble. So we need to protect our own chastity first and foremost. So you know what the worst thing is? You know, some of our brothers, they, you know, it's like women are made of kryptonite. You know, you know what kryptonite does to Superman? It makes him more stupid. I mean, as soon as kryptonite, a green stone gets out, he's got no power. And he just falls on the ground like useless. And so some men are like that, Muslim men are like that. When they see a woman and they see him, they just look down on the ground and they don't, like she doesn't even exist on planet Earth. Okay, so it must be cautious, be careful, be careful. Shaitan is clever. However long the Earth has been around, millions of years, thousands of years, more practice than you have. You're only 30, 20, 40, 80, whatever it is. You've got no experience. He's much smarter than you are, no matter how good a Muslim you are. So be cautious. Identify the signs. We need to have a course called Identify the Signs of Shaitan and Identify the Traps of Shaitan because he is smart, 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 very, very clever in what he does. And so this is one area that you will have to be perfect on. Not that you'll ever reach that perfection, but as much as possible. So you need to, again, do that test with the needle. Remember, how do you see if you're dead to something? You prick yourself. If you react, you're still alive. So if you find yourself, you say, okay, now I'm able to, I've got control of my senses. I'm not going to do immoral things. I'm not going to do things that are going to be bad. You need to still test it. You must test yourself first. How are you able to deal with it? So you must make sure you are strong when you're going out and doing your dawah. Okay. So basically what we see is Allah is calling people to have control over their senses, to have control over whatever drives they have in their lives. And so we have to have controls over our impulses, our urges. Some people, some, okay, I know I'm going to say women, they're going to get very upset. Some women have urges to spend money. Maybe it's their own money, but they still have urges to spend money. My brother is like this, and he won't mind me saying this because I tell him this and we both laugh about it. But if he sees it, he has to have it. He doesn't know how to control his urges. And I say to him, but you've got to learn. You're married now. You've got children. You have to control your urges. You can't just go buy a nice new fishing boat because somebody else has one. You can't go buy a new motorbike because somebody else has one. You can't go buy a new torpy because his torpy looked better than my one. You've got to have control of your urges. You must be careful even on spending. You are accountable for everything in life. So be very, very cautious. People laugh at me and probably some of you at home and say, what is that big massive thing on the table that's in front of them? This is an old device. It's like two years old already. Everyone goes, you need to get with the age. It's, these things are paper thin now. Why have you got such a thick one? You know, I don't care. It's, there's much more important things to spend money on. We have to be cautious on our spending. Don't just buy it because it's out there. Don't just be, buy it because it's the trend. So we must be cautious of even the way we have our urges to spend money. Just because 
Whoever bought out a new mobile phone doesn't mean you have to go buy it. You understand? I have a friend in South Africa, one of my teachers, Musai Dawid. His phone looks like it comes out of 1920. It's one of those old big brick phones still. He's got one of those old ones. And I say to him, please, just get a new phone. And he's like, yeah, yeah. But I know he'd rather spend money on something else. See? So he's a good example of that. So that's not why I've got this one, but it's just, I'm just saying, he's got an old phone. So don't always go for your urges. There's other things that you can rather do. And so when we see it the way that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu being the role model of what the Quran is teaching, being the role model of what Allah wants in for our life, he taught us to have control over these urges and that we should be cautious in what we let our bodies and our eyes and our ears and our minds wander into. Youngsters that are at home, this is for the youth. There is great danger on the internet. The internet is a wonderful tool, but there's great danger on the internet. As you've already heard, Cyber Nanny has warned you, everybody's warned you, CNN has warned you, everybody has warned you the dangers of the internet. If you're serious today and you really, really believe that you should change your life and you're sitting at home as a youngster and you want to become a, a better Muslim, but you know that what you're doing on the internet is not good, whether you are on chat lines, whether you are looking at things you shouldn't be looking at, whether you are ordering things that you shouldn't be ordering, whatever it is, not just talking about pornography, there's many other things that you do on the internet that are haram. You want to change. There is a program that you can download and it's very cheap. Some of them are free and some of them not so cheap. I'm not going to name the program, but I'm going to tell you how to look for it. What it does is it analyzes what you've been looking at over the last month and it emails it to a friend of yours. So whatever you've been doing over the last month, it sends a log history of all the activities that you've been doing over the month and it sends it to a friend of yours. Why would you want to do this? So your friend can prevent you from doing things that you shouldn't be doing. Peace TV presents Something What do you have to say about Learning the wise way What would you recommend us to take as career After we pass our school So what exactly we should do What do you have to say about pursuing two fields together Ideas brilliant Strategy sustained The best profession Is a profession of a person Who invites people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Avail the opportunity with Dr. Zakir. Depending upon what is your interest, but the main aim should be to spread the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To implement the convincing Islamic come educational formula to excel in your career, watch Career Guidance every Friday at 6.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 9.30 a.m. UK on Peace TV. Peace TV presents... Over 100 million viewers at one of the largest peace conferences in the world, addressing a sea of spellbound spectators. Over 30 world renowned orators on Islam with credentials impeccable. The truth of Islam. Deen is your way of life. It is our duty, our obligation. By following the Quran and Sunnah, we will give the message to one and all. To one and all. With articulation exquisite. Read the book of Allah. Islam is the easy way, it's the simple way. Remind each other. The Muslim is not a source of harm for other people. Collaborate with the people. For good. This is the call of Islam. With the mission of spreading the truth of Islam. Do what you can to spread the word of Islam. Wherever we are, live like Muslims. Use your power. Allah is saying, why do you need anything else? This Quran is self-sufficient. The only book on the face of the globe, the Quran. How a human being should lead his life is given in this instruction manual, manual the glorious Quran. The glorious Quran. For peace to prevail on earth in Peacemakers, next on Peace TV. I have a friend in South Africa, one of my teachers, Musai Dawid. His phone looks like it comes out of 1920. It's one of those old big brick phones still. He's got one of those old ones. And I say to him, please, just get a new phone. And he's like, yeah, yeah. But I know he'd rather spend money on something else. See, so he's a good example of that. So that's not why I've got this one, but it's just, 
I'm just saying, he's got an old phone. So don't always go for your urges. There's other things that you can rather do. And so when we see it, the way that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu being the role model of what the Quran is teaching, being the role model of what Allah wants in for our life, he taught us to have control over these urges and that we should be cautious in what we let our bodies and our eyes and our ears and our minds wander into. Youngsters that are at home, this is for the youth. There is great danger on the internet. The internet is a wonderful tool, but there's great danger on the internet. As you've already heard, Cyber Nanny has warned you, everybody's warned you, CNN has warned you, everybody has warned you the dangers of the internet. If you're serious today and you really, really believe that you should change your life and you're sitting at home as a youngster and you want to become a, a better Muslim, but you know that what you're doing on the internet is not good, whether you are on chat lines, whether you are looking at things you shouldn't be looking at, whether you are ordering things that you shouldn't be ordering, whatever it is, not just talking about pornography, there's many other things that you do on the internet that are haram. You want to change. There is a program that you can download and it's very cheap. Some of them are free and some of them not so cheap. I'm not going to name the program, but I'm going to tell you how to look for it. What it does is it analyzes what you've been looking at over the last month and it emails it to a friend of yours. So whatever you've been doing over the last month, it sends a log history of all the activities that you've been doing over the month and it sends it to a friend of yours. Why would you want to do this? So your friend can prevent you from doing things that you shouldn't be doing. It's a way of making sure that the commitment you're going to make today about not doing the things that you shouldn't be doing you have answerability to another human being on earth. This person you're going to have to trust because we are not supposed to expose our bad deeds to one another. So try to find someone who is also suffering from the same issue that you are. Maybe you both want to stop. And so like A, you would have a sponsor. Like drug addiction, you would have someone who is your sponsor that would help you stop doing that thing. It's a very, very powerful tool to prevent people from doing something haram on the internet. If it gets posted to you, you're not going to do anything about it. Sometimes we need someone to help us, someone to guide us and help us to stop doing these haram things. We want to help you. You need to help yourself. So try and find either a group of people that are involved in this type of thing and help each other. And this way you can keep track of the things that you shouldn't be doing on the internet. That's just, by the way, a thought. Doesn't mean that I'm saying you have to do this. Just a thought. If you seriously want to change your life, you seriously want to start living a moral life, you still you want to really change yourself. If you do it on your own in isolation, it can be very, very difficult. So sometimes it's better to have this program, which you can order and get online. If you type in the search engine, you'll be able to find it and use this. Maybe it'll help you. Maybe you can even, if you say to your parents and you're honest to your parents and you say to your parents, listen, I want to change. I don't want to be this person anymore. Help me to change. They might be able to be the person who receives this email. They can help you as long as they're not going to overjudge you and help you and guide you. So that's just in passing, inshallah. Now we're going to move on to have a look at one of the hadiths where it talks about how we can, as people calling to Islam, the character that we need to have in our life and what we are calling people to have in their lives. So let's have a look what the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu had to say. In the hadith of Rasul Sallallahu the Prophet Sallallahu tells us about his da'wah. He was once asked by Amr bin Absa Radila Talanhu, to tell him his mission of prophethood. The Prophet ﷺ said, I have been sent to teach you to be benevolent to your kith and kin, to abolish idolatry, to believe in unity of Allah, and not to associate someone with Allah. Muslim. So we see here that he explains exactly what we've already been talking about today already, what we've spoken about in this program, that we are to bring ourselves to answerability, that we are to unite with Allah. And if we unite with the Allah, when we come closer, when we understand the word unity is to unite under the teachings of Allah, not to unite with Allah, to associate ourselves, but to unite under the umbrella of who Allah is. He wants us to live a life there of separation, of difference, to be separate, yet still part of this world. You know, we are still going to live on this planet till the day Allah calls us and then we are no longer on this planet. But until that time, we still have to be connected with Allah. But we're still going to live on this earth. So in a way, we are like aliens, extraterrestrial aliens. We don't belong to this earth, but we're in this earth. We've come from another planet far, far away. Our home is not here. 
This is just a, a temporary housing establishment. Our home is somewhere else. So we need to keep that in our minds. This is the earth that we live on, but this is not our final destination. We're moving on. You have a question, Chef? Sheikh, I wanted to ask about aliens, because people have seen the real saucers flying in the air. And especially when we are speaking to an atheist, he may bring this up and uh, try to investigate as to what uh, we as Muslims have to say, if there are any predictions in our scriptures about it. So you're wanting to know, how would you explain to someone if they asked you about little green men or aliens? Well, we as Muslims believe that Allah has many creations. We're not the only creation. He created angels, he created jinn. Allah is all-powerful. We have no idea what Allah has created. We only know what He has revealed to us and what is relevant to us. So we cannot stand up and say that He did not create any other life forms or other species. We don't know this. We are barely getting to understand what species we have in our oceans. We have only discovered a fraction of what is actually in our ocean. There are species that we are still discovering. I have an alien species in my home. It is a fish species that is unique, that is so different that everybody is confused on how to deal with this. So there are many things of Allah's creation that are odd and strange that we don't have 100% understanding of. Whether there's little green men that came down in a spaceship and travel around on planet Earth and are doing probings and things like that, I highly doubt it. But who knows? Allah and His Messenger knows best. But what I can say is we should maybe not focus too much on little green men and Area 54 and uh, alien abductions and things like this. Most of the research that has been done on that have failed to present anything substantial. The research that has been done by independent research bodies, a research that has been done by the governments of different countries, most of the research has, more than 99%, has been explainable. But however, there is that 1%. Now there is a great possibility, as we know in Islam, that jinns can do things. So we know that this is possible. But that is a question, again, that I'm not going to get myself caught into. I'm um, dealing with jinns and explanations of what they can and what they cannot do. But in explaining to them that you can say, well, there's great possibilities um, that it could be. We don't have any definitive information. Like, you don't have any scientific hardcore facts. We don't have any scientific hardcore facts. We're in the same life. We're living the same experiences that you're experiencing. And we don't have any information on this. But we don't have anything that says there is not. You understand? Like, for Christians, they will probably say there's absolutely no possibility for that because they believe they are the only creation there was no other creation this is it this is the only creation that Allah created according to Christianity for them it's not possible because that would defy what they understand God to have done in his creation they believe this is the only creation nothing else was created before nothing was created afterwards however there is a great problem with that um, theory that Christians have because even in their own text in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, you have what is called the gap, gap theory that has taken place in Christian theology. That they believe that when did Shaitan fall, according to Christianity? When did Satan fall? When did he get disgraced? Or when did he get kicked out of heaven or whatever it is that they believe? There's a gap between these two. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then you have another part where, you know, Satan is in the Garden of Eden. So when did he fall? Did he fall the day that God had only created, day one, and seven days later the devil's running around the garden already? So it's very unlikely that there was only this human creation. There must have been another creation before that. Where does shaitan come from? Where does the devil come from? So in Christian theology they call it the gap theory. I'm not going to get into all of that now because it will take us way too much time to explain the gap theory. But if you Google it, if you want to look online, you can find out the theory, it's called the GAP, G-A-P theory, the GAP theory. And this is very good for us as Muslims to understand because it helps us in our argument when we're dealing with... In theology, there's a big difference between a Bible student and a theologian. A Bible student only knows the Bible. That's what he's taught from, that's what he understands from. Where a theologian, he's got many other sources, so he looks at many other books. That's where these theories come from, from theologians, not from Bible students. GAP theory. Well, that's all the time we have for today's program. So we're going to have to wait for another gap when you can come and join us again here in the studio and learn a little bit more about how to do Dawa'ila. So from us all here, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
مشفق متعطف A friendly message by Dr. Zakir The fastest growing religion in the world A survey was published in the Reader's Digest Almanacher book 1993 which was also reprinted in the Plain Truth magazine February 1984 This survey gave the statistics of the increase in the percentage of the major world religions in a span of 50 years from 1934 to 1984 the religion which increased the maximum at number 1 position was islam which increased by 235% christianity only 47% which war took place between 1934 and 1984 which forced millions of people to accept islam which sword was used according to the latest statistics today the fastest growing religion in america is islam the fastest growing religion in europe is islam the fastest growing religion in the world is islam which sword is forcing tens of thousands of americans to accept islam tens of thousands of europeans to accept islam millions of people in the world to accept islam which sword it is the sword of islam the sword of peace the sword of truth and wisdom which gives the solution to the problems of humanity this tv the solution for humanity oh the value of money in the hereafter will be measured by its proper use in the present ya ayyuhal ladina amanu anfiqu mimma razaqnakum min qabl an yatiya yawmul la bay'un fihi wa la khullatu wa la shafa'a according to the glorious quran one of the best ways to use your money is to spend it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by spreading his message of Islam. Peace TV is a non-profit Islamic satellite television channel that is primarily dedicated for just that cause, the proper presentation of Islam. It's a great choice to invest in it and a golden opportunity to purify your wealth in a way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Support Peace TV. Send your zakat and donations to IRFI Al Rayyan Bank, 47 Calthorpe Road, Birmingham, UK. B15 1TH. Pound account number 0113230. IBAN GB49 ARAY 3000830113201. Sort code 300083. Swift BIC code ARAY G B22 please confirm your contribution at support@peacetv.tv at support peace team the solution for humanity